Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how to make a custom 404 error page. Okay, so you have seen custom 404 error pages before, even if you weren't really aware of what they are. So certainly at, uh, at any big time website, you should come across this from time to time just when you're clicking on maybe a dead link or you mistype an address. So I'm over here at zipcar.com and if I type in a bogus address and what the site refers me to is called a custom error page, specifically a custom 404 error page. And this uh, over at Zipcar, I think they're doing a good thing. They are obviously keeping me branded here, so I still know I'm at Zipcar's site even though I made a mistake. They're letting me know that I've reached uh, this page by accident. I still have the main navigation, which is available on the home page. I can still log in, still have access to a bunch of things. So good example of a custom 404 error page. Now here's another one over at Apple. Um, I'll just type in a bogus page. Now, what they're doing at Apple, which I kind of like is, well, they know you're here because of some problem. Notice my ad, my bad address is still up in the address bar, so if it was a small typo, I could correct it. Well, now they're kind of giving me a site map. So, okay, let's get some, uh, some specifics. Where do you want to go? So this is another nice approach. Same navigation at the top, same branding, and uh, just helping me find what I was looking for. Now, just before I turned on the recorder, I was looking for some examples. Check this out over at target.com. So, bogus page, nothing. This is not what you want to do. Okay, so this is an example of a big website who has not taken the little steps to provide customers with a custom 404 error page. So, I may have made a typo, who knows, but this is not a very user friendly message to get. So, let's show them how it is done. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and pop open my editor here. And, and I'm using Notepad++, and I'm going to be using several files, but I'm going to go ahead and start off and just make a standard web page file. There we go, and let me go ahead and take a second to save this. And I'm going to save it just over to my desktop. I will create a new folder, and I'm going to call this uh, Site01. And I will just give it the name index.html. So I now have a web page and I'm going to be referring to a style sheet which is going to be in a styles folder. I haven't created that so on another file I'm going to go ahead and create a quick style sheet. Got that. Go ahead and do a save as. This one is going to go into a subfolder styles and I'll just call it style.css. So now I have a style sheet. And I'm using a subfolder here just to kind of mimic a more real-to-life example. Now I'm going to make the error page. And my error page, for my demo here, I'll go ahead and do something very similar, but I'll make sure we know that this is the error page. Do a file save as, and I'll just save this where my web page is, and I'll go ahead and give it the very common 404 error.html. So it's just another web page. However, I'm going to make this particular change. Instead of my hyper reference referring directly to the styles subfolder and then my style CSS, I'm going to put in slash site01 slash. Let me zoom out just a bit. This is actually a good habit and what a lot of sites do. Whenever you lead a hyper reference with a slash, you are referring to the file, to the path starting from the root. So from the root of my site, I'm going to go into my site01 folder, and then I'll go into my styles folder, and then I will find my style CSS. This is particularly important with a 404 error page because, especially in very complex websites with lots of folder structure, you don't really know where the customer is going to be when they make the error. So refer to the CSS from the root, lead with a slash. Of course, a lot of big-time websites will do that on all of their files anyway. Lead from the root, site01, or whatever the folder is. Of course, in real life, we probably wouldn't have that. We would just have styles right there. And away we go. Okay, last order of business, one last file. This is going to be my HT access. For now, I'll just call it htaccess.txt. We're going to correct that soon enough. htaccess is a special file for Apache web servers. And what we're going to type here is pretty simple. It's going to be the message error document space 404 space slash site 01 slash 404 error .html. Now, if in real life we would not be using this site 
01. So basically, this is probably what your HT access would look like. Error document 404 space slash the root 404 error. But because I'm using a subfolder here, I'm going to go ahead and put in that site 01. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now I'm ready to do some publishing. So I've already got FileZilla open, connected to my site. And I'm just going to, ooh, I'm actually already on the desktop too, I believe. Let me just refresh. I'll go up a level here. There it is. So ooh, I'm going to go ahead and create a directory on this side, site01. I'm going to take all of these files and publish them. They're going to publish fast. Now, once they're on the server, I'm going to make a slight correction to this ht access file. I'm going to rename it .ht access. This is a special system file. It's .htacces. So locally, I like to keep it as a plain text file just for easier opening, easier review, and stuff like that. But on the server, I rename it to this special system file. Now that that's done, I should be able to head over to my site. Head over to site 01. There's my main home page. I'll just type in a mistake. And there is my error page. And of course, for real life, you would have your logo. You'd have your navigation menu, perhaps a site map like Apple, or perhaps some search capabilities like Zipcar. Mm -hmm.